आई एम डॉक्टर ए पी पाटिल डियर स्टूडेंट्स ऑफ बी एस सी फर्स्ट बॉटनी सेमिस्टर फर्स्ट पेपर सेकेंड इज बायोडाइवर्सिटी ऑफ अर्चिगोनिएट इन दिस यूनिट नंबर टू इज टेरिडोफाइट इन दिस टूडे वील स्टडी अबाउट द सिलाजिनेला वी विल स्टार्ट दिस टॉपिक विथ एन इंट्रोडक्शन द ग्रुप ऑफ प्लांट्स हैविंग वैस्क्युलर टिश्यू लाइक झायलेम एंड फ्लोएम आर कॉल्ड एज वैस्क्युलर प्लांट्स दीज ग्रुप्स आर टेरिडोफाइट जिम्नोस्पर्म एंड एनजियोस्पर्म फाइल ब्रायोफाइट एंड अलगी आर कॉल्ड एज अ नॉन वैस्क्युलर प्लांट्स इन टेरिडोफाइट्स टेरॉन मीन्स फिदर एंड फाइटॉन मीन्स प्लांट हेन्स द टेरिडोफाइटिक प्लांट्स बियरिंग फिदर लाइक लिवज एंड these are cryptogams that is non flowering plants they are represented by 400 living and fossil genera with 10500 species these plants originated 3800 lakhs years ago in silurian period of paleozoic era these are of two types fern means sporangia born on leaf back side with underground rhizomatous stem and megaphyllous leaves for example teris nephrolepis and adiantum the second group is fern alleys sporangia born in special structure like cone or different structures leaves are small and microphyllous for example silaginilla equisetum and ophioglossum In this slide we will see about the general characters of pteridophytes. Pteridophytes are herbaceous and grow at shady moist cool place. It may be aquatic. For example, Azolla salvinia marsilia. These pteridophytic plants grows in water bodies. Some are epiphytic, lycopodium. Some are perennial, Alsophila and Cyathea. Sporophyte is dominant phase it is diploid and produce haploid spores within sporangium sporophyte is divided into root stem and leaf stem is branched monopodial in the xylotum like this root stem leaves are not present roots are adventitious with growing apex stem is underground and rhizomatous only leaves are aerial leaves are of two types microphyllous and megaphyllous the stalk of leaf is called as a stem leaves are simple or compound leaves inside the leaves in anatomical structure it consists of spongy and palisade cell The leaf and stem contains filiform trichomes or hair-like structures and stomata. Vascular system consists of tracheids in the xylem and sieve tubes in phloem. Sporangia born at apexial surface or at the lower surface. It may be homosporous or heterosporous. Homosporous in Dryopteris lycopodium and heterosporous in मार्सिलिया एंड सिलाजिनीला हेट्रोस्पोरस कंडीशन कंसिस्ट ऑफ मेगास्पोर एंड माइक्रोस्पोर यू स्पोरेंजिया डेवलपमेंट मीन्स स्पोरेंजिया डेवलप फ्रॉम सुपरफिशियल सेल लिप्टोस्पोरेंजिया डेवलपमेंट ऑफ स्पोरेंजिया मीन्स फ्रॉम द सिंगल सुपरफिशियल सेल स्पोरेंजिया आर डेवलप आफ्टर जर्मिनेशन ऑफ स्पोर्स देर इज जनरेशन ऑफ गैमेटोफाइट containing anthidium and archegonium in this male and female gametes are produced in anthidium male gametes are produced in archegonium female gametes are produced after the fertilization zygote is produced this will develop into sporophyte let us start to study morphology of sporophyte Silaginilla contains more than 700 species. It is commonly called as spike mosses or club mosses. 
Selaginella krausiana and Selaginella megaphylla are common species. It luxuriantly or vigorously grows in moist shady place or on rock surface. It may be creeping in Selaginella krausiana, erect in Selaginella trachyphylla, climber in Selaginella elegans and plant is differentiated into root stem and isophore and leaves. Roots are adventitious. Roots are endogenously produced on dichotomous branches. See this diagram which shows different parts of the Selaginella krausiana. Stobulus, leaves, stem, rhizophore. Leaves are arranged in the rows. This slide shows classification of Selaginella. According to G. M. Smith, Kingdom Planty, Subkingdom Cryptogams, Division Lepidophyta, Class Lycopodini, Order Selaginellales, Family Selaginaceae, Genus Selaginella and Species Krausiana. So, this is about classification of Selaginella. See the different parts of Selaginella. It consists of rhizophore. In Selaginella ciliaris, leafless prop like structures are present from lower side of stem, which are called as a rhizophore. The stem is herbaceous, dicot, and erect. It is prostrate. Leaves are microphyllous. Simple single vein, sessile that is without stalk, lanceolate in shape. Then ligule is present at base of leaf and stem or adaxial surface close to its base. It shows foot like structure called as a glossopodium. It is with covering called as a glossopodium sheath. Two types of leaves are present vegetative leaf and sporophyll. Sporophyll is sporangium bearing leaf. Based on leaf morphology, Selaginella shows homeophyllum and heterophyllum type of leaves. Similar type of leaves are present in homeophyllum type. For example, Selaginella selaginoides. And in heterophyllum type of leaves, there is a presence of smaller and larger leaves. Two dorsal rows are with small leaves and two are with large leaves. For example, Selaginella krausiana. This figure represents foliar arrangement. A leaf with ligule on adaxial surface of the leaf and ligule is present at base of the leaf. And near the ligule there is a presence of glossopodium which is along with glossopodium sheath. Then we will see about the anatomical structures in the Selaginella, which includes root, rhizome, stem and leaf. TS of root shows epidermis which is outer layer, compact elongated cells are present in this and root hairs are present in the TS of root. Cortex is parenchymatous. It shows endodermis, pericycle, monar, stili, exar, xylem and phloem is surrounded by xylem. So, stili is protostili. It is simple type of stili. TS of rhizome shows epidermis, cuticle, root hairs are absent in the TS of rhizophore. Cortex is with sclerenchyma cells. Inner white zone is with parenchyma cells. It shows endodermis, pericycle, monar, stili, exar, xylem. Phloem is surrounded by phloem tissue and uh, xylem is present at the center. So, phloem occurs in the form of ring around the xylem. It consists of simple protostili which shows Phloem at outside and xylem at inside. See this section. 
which is transfer section of the stem shows different parts in the next slide we will see about the description of different parts in the ts of stem epidermis forms outer layer with thick cuticle stomatal hairs are absent root hairs are absent in stem cortex is lignified and with sclerenchymatous hypodermis inner zone is with green parenchymatous tissue steely may be one or more in the ts of stem monosteely is present in selaginella spirulosa diastely is present in selaginella habilata and polystelic condition is present in selaginella krausiana single layered epidermis monarch and dire xylem with tracheids phloem occurs in form of ring around the xylem mostly protostely but in few species siphonostely is present radially elongated endodermal cells are called as a trabeculi which are with casparian band on their lateral walls so ts of stem consists of trabeculi see this figure of ts of stem which shows structure of trabeculi and casparian bands next anatomical structure is ts of leaf it is simple consist of upper and lower epidermis epidermal cells have chloroplast the leaves are epistomic or hypostomic stomata found mostly in the midrib region mesophyll tissue are present with intercellular space single vascular bundle is present and vascular bundle is concentric it is spherical composed of single strand of xylem surrounded by phloem the vascular bundle is surrounded by a bundle sheath cell so this is peculiar character in the ts of leaf ts of leaf consist of bundle sheath cells then we will see about the structure of strobilus it is also called as a cone in majority of the species sporophylls are crowded and aggregated at the apex of stem it is compact structure sporangial development may be eusporangiate or leptosporangiate in selaginella heterosporous condition is present that is microspore smaller in size and more in number and megaspores larger in size and few in number are present gametophytes are endosporic and reproduction takes place by two methods that is sexual reproduction and vegetative reproduction vegetative reproduction is by tubers cuttings and prostate branches and sexual reproduction is with help of the fusion of gametes three main type of strobilus are tetragons recipinate and spiral microsporangium is present on microsporophyll megasporangium is present on megasporophyll microsporophylls and megasporophylls born on the same axis forming strobilus structure microsporangium is globular elongated with many reddish or orange colored microspores and megasporangium is club shaped structure with few my megaspores which are white or pale yellow in color this figure shows structure of megasporophyll microsporophyll microsporangium megasporangium ligule microspores and megaspores so in ls of strobilus these sporophylls are present then we'll see in detail structures of microsporophyll and megasporophyll microsporophyll is the structure 
of Selaginella strobilis. Microsporangium bearing sporophyll is called microsporophyll. It is with ligule at their adaxial surface. The position of microsporophyll in strobilus varies with species to species. It is subsessile, that is, small stalk is present in microsporangium. It is with two layered sporangial jacket, outer layer consists of chloroplast. You know about the color, its shape. Of course, it is globular and with reddish or orange colored microspores. It dehydes transversely. See these figures. Microsporophyll, microsporangium at the base of microsporophyll, which consists of microspores. Ligule is present at the base of microsporophyll. Then we will study about megasporophyll. Megasporangium bearing sporophyll is called megasporophyll. It is with ligule at their adaxial surface. Meaning of this adaxial surface is Sporophylls are present, ligules are present on upper surface. Microsporangia, megasporangium are present on upper surface of the sporophylls. The position and number of megasporophyll varies with species to species. It is subsessile structure with two sporangial jackets. Outer jacket contains chloroplast. It is club shaped with few megaspores with pale yellow color or white color and larger in size. Megaspore shows larger size and few megaspores are present in megasporangium. Only one to four megaspores are present in megasporangium. It dehyses transversely. This figure represents structure of megasporophyll and megasporangium. Each megaspore is with exospore, mesospore, endospore and nucleus. Heterospory in pteridophytes means two types of spores are present in the Silaginella. Then Isoetis, Marsilia, Azola. Consist of two types of the spores, which is called as a heterosporous condition in the cones. The homosporous fern produces Anthridia archegonia on same gametophyte, but in the case of heterosporous fern, Anthridia produced on male gametophyte and archegonia are present on female gametophyte. So, male gametophyte consists of microspore, female gametophyte consists of megaspore. Like this condition is called as heterosporous condition in pteridophytes. Then we will study about the morphology of rhizophore. It is controversial matter. According to Van Tighem, Harvey, Gibson, Uphoff, it is considered as a root because it shows root-like character. For example, positively geotrophic, downward growth, they have no leaves, it is leafless structure. They exhibit root-like internal structure, shows monostelic condition. Then some other group of scientists as Birchman, Wurzdell, Cusick considered rhizophore as shoot. It shows shoot like characters. It arises exogenously whereas root arise endogenously. Root cap root hairs are absent. Angle meristem is present which is responsible for the growth. 
under controlled experimental condition rhizophore can be induced into shoot according to bower and gobel rhizophore is an organ of zoogenesis so meaning of this word zoogenesis means the organ whose morphology is not known so rhizophore is like this organ of the selaginella plant which is called as a zoogenesis whose morphology is unknown thank you